Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily. My favorite makeup today is this. This is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in the Anti-Aging Formula. I don't find a huge difference between the different formulas, but I do really like this one and I have it in a full size. Uh, this stuff is really great at keeping your eyeshadow staying on all night and not smudging. And also, a tube of this lasts forever. Like, I will be using this for months and months and months, even heavily putting on eyeshadow, and it won't run out for a really long time. It's definitely worth the money. And now, on to the video. So today's video is about sale items and why we purchase them. So did I buy this sale item because it's on sale or did I buy it because I wanted it and I was glad I was getting a deal or was it a little bit of both? So there's two things I picked up recently that I'm gonna try out today. The first is this, this is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Prism palette. So the palette itself like looks very beautiful. The packaging is lovely. It's got that fuzzy velvet texture that a lot of the Anastasia uh, packaging has. Uh, when I originally saw this on Instagram, I wasn't sure if I was going to purchase it because I thought it looked very similar to the colors in the Subculture palette. But I did think it looked very beautiful and I thought that the shimmers were simply great. However, with all the brouhaha that came out over Subculture and how powdery it was and how people's palettes were crumbling in front of their eyes, and then everyone was saying that this had a very similar formula to that, so if you didn't like Subculture, you weren't going to like Prism either. And I was frightened off of Subculture for several months. I did pick it up recently when it was on sale, and I actually really, really like it, but it's definitely a difficult palette if you're sort of not the greatest at your makeup and you don't have the best tools. You have to work with it a little bit. And that's something I have been doing and I think it's been worth the trouble, but that kept me from buying the Prism palette as well. However, this then showed up on sale on the Sephora website and also on the Ulta website and I possibly on the Anastasia website directly. I'm not actually sure about that one. I don't actually shop there. But this was basically on sale across the board at multiple different stores and I thought, well, I guess it's now or never. Because I really did enjoy Subculture, I figured I was gonna try out Prism. So that's what we're gonna do today. And so just as a comparison, we have Subculture on top and then the Prism palette is below. The color schemes do look very complimentary, but they're not exactly the same. This palette also does come with a brush. It's got sort of like a crease brush on one end and sort of a regular eyeshadow brush on the other. It's very similar, if not identical, to the one that comes in the Subculture palette. I do not have the Modern Renaissance, so I can't speak to that. Haven't really used the brush much, so I'm gonna try it today. So I think to start out, I'm gonna take that Laura shade across my lid. This one, at least, does not seem to be as fussy as in the Subculture palette. I think next I'm gonna take this Saturn shade and sort of sweep that also across the lid. Well, the, the two colors I really wanna to try to use today are Throne and Sphere. It's very interesting that when the palette is angled this way and I'm looking at it, the Throne and Osiris look exactly the same, but when I look at them head on, then I can see the differences in the glitter. So as a person who is a big fan of the Subculture palette, no regrets on that one. The shades in here so far, much easier to use. They don't require nearly so much delicacy. So I'm gonna take a bit of Throne and try to put that in my, on the outside corner of my eye and sort of bring that up into my outer V. Definitely is glitter fallout and also got a little weird on, on this side. So I'm gonna have to do some blending on that. I'm gonna go back in with Laura to try to settle that down a little. Also, once you blend it, the green kind of goes away completely. It just becomes sort of like a matte black shade. There's, I mean, there's sort of a different color to it, but that one's actually pretty disappointing. So I think I'm gonna take Sphere now and go on the inner corner of my eye and see what I can salvage from this. The lipstick was kind of competing, so I took it off so I didn't sort of confuse my color story any more than I already have. I'm going to try patting thrown on with my finger in that corner to see if I can get that color back. I'm also going to take a little bit of this pyramid shade and put that in the middle of my lid. So I also took some of Sphere underneath my eyes and in my inner corner. It didn't quite turn out the way I was expecting it to, but I'm pleased with how this turned out. So I'm going to put on some mascara and finish the eyes. And I'm going to take just a little touch of my Kat Von D Basket Case Anti-Precision Eyeliner because I'm loving this stuff. So it's not an insignificant amount of fallout. Throne is definitely the worst offender, but I'm not upset about it. 
it did go on pretty well when I put it on with my finger. I think I just will not try to apply it with a brush going forward. So of the mattes I tried today, I was really impressed with both Lore and Saturn. I also liked Sphere, though that went on a little bit light. I would wish that there was more color payoff for that one, but it is a really beautiful neon color. Uh, Throne works really well with your finger, and Pyramid is absolutely gorgeous with your finger. There's definitely other shades in this that I'm looking forward to trying. I just can't try them all at one time. This look is already a lot of look. But so far I am pleased with the palette. It might just be that I have to treat these foily finish ones very carefully, but these mattes are really good and they blend really easily. At this point, we're gonna move on to the other product. That would be this, this is from Urban Decay. This is the Vice Special Effects Long Lasting Water Resistant Lip Top Coat. I picked up the color Circuit. It's sort of a green glitter. Uh, a number of these were on sale and some of them still are, but not the entire line, just certain colors. So this is what the packaging looks like. It looks very similar actually to the Urban Decay Liquid Lipstick, just the, uh, the cap is a different color. And this is what the applicator looks like. Ah, it is a brush. For a second, it kind of looked like it was a plastic spatula. That's how like firm this was, but it's a very beautiful greeny shimmer. This is intended as a top coat, but you can also put it on by itself. I'm gonna try it by itself first. So far, I hate this brush. So this is what it looks like by itself. There's still a little pink lipstick on my lips, but I'm not really wearing actual product at this point. It's a little sticky, but it's not bad. It's very sheer. It's not nearly as pigmented as I was expecting or hoping that it would be. So I'm gonna go get a lipstick and put that on as a base. Pick something fairly dark so this hopefully this will show up a little bit better. So on this side we have the regular lipstick and on the other side that's with the top coat circuit on top. So the lipsticks I've chosen to show this on are the Sephora Cream Lip Stain in the color black. Also the Kat Von D Studded Kiss Lipstick, the old formula in the shade Babe. And this is the Makeup Forever Artist Cream Rouge Lipstick, I believe in the color 211. So I'm gonna put on that Sephora Cream Lip Stain in the shade 28, which is black, because of all three of these, I think that's gonna look the prettiest, so we'll start there. I'm always reminded how good these smell. They have sort of a weird blackberry candy smell to them, but I really like it. <laughs> so after putting the Sephora Cream Lip Stain on and then putting the lip coat on top of it, I find it performed much better. On my bare lips, the lip topper sort of got sticky and patchy and didn't look pretty. You couldn't really tell that it was very green at all, so that was disappointing. On top of this black lipstick, I think it looks really great actually. It's sort of fulfilling that need in my Everlasting Glimmer Veil collection from Kat Von D because it doesn't have a green, but this is giving me that green that I've been looking for. Uh, I will say that my lips are a little bit tingly when wearing this, so I'm going to sort of keep an eye on that and I'll update you in a future video if that continues to be kind of weird. Um, although it's starting to fade now, but that's definitely something to notice. It definitely felt weird when I first put it on. So final thoughts. So I did buy both of these things because they were on sale. I had been looking at them, but I wasn't going to go forward with it unless there was a real incentive for me to do so. And basically a way to incentivize me is to put it on sale. So far I do like both of them. I'm going to continue to use them. I don't feel like I need to return them or anything like that. I'm hoping I'll find some other colors to use this top coat that'll be pretty as well, but I mean so far it does look pretty great on top of black. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, please subscribe and I'll see you all soon. Bye!